In the last few videos, we've been talking about measure theory, and what I would like to do here is introduce a specific type of measure, um, probably the most famous and well-known measure. It's called the Lebesgue measure. But in order to introduce the Lebesgue measure, I'm first going to start out by talking about something called the Lebesgue outer measure, which will turn out to be essentially the same as the Lebesgue measure. Um, but with a different um, with a different domain. Still working on figuring out how to spell measure. Okay, here we go. The big outer measure. So um, the the big outer measure is a function. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and call it m from the power set of the reals, or we could say to R n to zero infinity. Now we know that the power set of the reals is a sigma algebra. Uh, so the, the Lebesgue outer measure will be defined this way. For E a subset of R define the measure of E, the outer measure of E, as let's see, the infimum of all covers, um, covers by open intervals. So the infimum of the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of the volume of i sub k such that, let's see, such that i sub k covers E and all the I sub K are intervals or or, uh, or the, the the N dimensional if we were to use RN it would be the N dimensional version of intervals so boxes, parallel bipeds, whatever you want to call them so what does this definition actually mean? Let's break that down a little bit let's suppose that we have the, the real number line here and let's say we have some set on the reals. Let's, let's use blue for our set and let's, let, let's call our set E. And we'll go ahead and say you know, that's E and maybe it has some holes in it, maybe it's a canter set of some some sort. So we can, we can chop these little holes in the set just kind of show that it might not be strictly made of, of nice behaving things. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a bunch of intervals that cover it. And of course intervals are nice be nicely behaving. So we get this interval, and this interval, and this interval, and this interval, and maybe it, maybe it covers more than it needs to. And we take, we add up the the lengths of all of these, and the length is just defined as as the endpoints, uh, the the difference of the endpoints is the length of an interval, whether it's open or closed, right? And so it doesn't matter um, if they cover it exactly or if they cover a little bit more than it, but as long as they cover it, they're they're in this set. You add up all of their lengths and see what that is. So then you say, okay, could there be a smaller cover? And you say, oh, actually, yeah, there could be. Maybe we could erase. Um, let's see if I can get my eraser here. For some reason, it's not wanting me to get the eraser, but maybe I could erase uh, a little bit of this, and it would still cover it, and that would work. And and maybe I could come up with a completely new uh, cover that, that somehow is even smaller than that one that I already have. Okay, and so the idea is we take the infimum of all of these. For for some sets, you can imagine it wouldn't be possible to, to take an arbitrarily small cover. And so those ones would have positive outer measure. All right, for this set, for example, it looks like it probably would have positive outer measure depending on how, how canter y they actually are on the inside or how close they are to what they look like the way I drew them. Anyway, so that's the idea of outer measure. And sometimes we'll put a little star here to denote that we're talking about the, the outer measure, we're not necessarily talking about an actual measure. And it's not an actual measure. We, we've shown in um, in a previous video that, that this isn't an actual measure, or at least a, a measure that has properties that we would like this to have um, is not an actual measure if we take its domain to be the power set of the reals, as we do for this. So, let's see. We want to figure out what properties this has. Well, first of all, we can point out that M star is monotonic. 
right? We know that every every measure has the property of monotonicity. Whoops. All right, what is going on there? M star is monotonic. Okay, here we go. What does that mean? That means if E is a subset of F, then the outer measure of E is less than or equal to the outer measure of F. And how do we know that's true? Well, the proof is actually just one line. So I'll go ahead and write it down here. Um, the every cover of F is also a cover of E, in particular any cover by intervals, since that's uh, what we're assuming, is also a cover of E by intervals. And so we're taking the infimum over a smaller set when we do it with E than we are with, or sorry, the infimum over a larger set. Because there could be things that cover E that don't cover F. Maybe not, maybe, maybe everything that covers E also covers F, but maybe there are. So we're taking the infimum over a larger set, right? Everything that covers F covers E, but not the other way around. So there could be more things that cover E, and maybe some of them would have smaller measures than the, the ones that cover F. Okay, so that, that's how we know that it's monotonic. The next thing I want to show is that M star is not sigma additive. If it were sigma additive, then it would be, uh, we'd be about done, but sigma sub additive. All right. So the proof of this again. Let me let me say what that means. That means if e sub one, e sub two, etc., are all in well in the power set of x or in the power set of the reals, then the sum of the, or then the measure of their unions, or in this case the outer measure of their unions, is less than or equal to the sum of their measures. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. And let's go ahead and try to see if we can prove that. It shouldn't be a very difficult thing. Let me just go ahead and write it down. So, to do that, uh, I'm going to start out by a picture and then maybe we'll, maybe we'll actually write down what we see here. But let's say that that is our, our real line. We have some set E sub 1. Let's call this thing right there E sub 1. All right, so it's a union of three little pieces. I don't know if those pieces are intervals or something else. Who knows? Whoops. Okay. And then E sub 2 maybe looks like a bunch of red things. E sub 2 will be the, these red guys. Maybe they, maybe they overlap in this weird way. And then E sub 3 can be blue. Maybe this does actually overlap. Overlap, overlap, where they are, uh, you know, doing something like that. Okay, so there's E sub 3, and we can keep going, right? So E sub 1, E sub 2, E sub 3. Whoops, uh, shoot, what is going on here? There we go. Alright, let me draw E sub 3 one more time, because that was weird. Okay, so that's E sub 3, and we can keep going. We can have infinitely many of these guys. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to try to show that a you know, the, the smallest possible cover of, of their union is going to be uh, less than or equal to the, the smallest, the, the sum of the smallest possible covers of all of these guys. <coughs> so, how can we do that? Well, we know that, uh, let me scroll down, and I'll, I'll kind of just refer to this picture as I'm, as I'm writing it. Okay, so we know that uh, there exists some cover, let me put it this way, um, for, for E sub K. There exists a cover I sub J 
and j goes from 1 to infinity such that the sum uh, from j equals 1 to infinity of, of the volume, the length of i sub j. That, that v stands for volume, and it just means the, uh, the difference between the endpoints of i sub j if we're in R1. If we're in Rn, then it would be just the volume of the box defined in, in the way that you would expect. But by the way, let me, let me, well, we'll take care of the infinite case in just a minute. We need to, t and the infinite case is really easy to take care of. In fact, I, I can just do this in a few words. If, um, if, any of the the e sub k's have measure infinity, we're done. Okay, so if e k has measure infinity or has the big outer measure infinity for any k, we are done. And why are we done? Well, because then the sum uh, of all of these things is going to be at least infinity, and everything including infinity is less than or equal to infinity. So so that's really easy. Okay, so that, then the infinite case is taken care of. We can assume that they're all finite. All right, so for each e sub k, there exists some kind of cover where the sum of their volumes is, is less than or equal to the actual measure of this thing, so the actual measure of e sub k plus epsilon. And we can do that for any epsilon, right? So what that means is let me go back up here and let's, let's say we're talking about the, the green e sub k. Alright, so e sub 1 I think is what we said that one was. Well, there's some cover, and we can maybe maybe this, plus this, plus this, maybe that's the cover. And I tried to draw these just slightly outside so that they're covering a little bit more than necessary. But the, the amount that they're covering, in addition to what they need to be covering, is epsilon. So so their measure is only epsilon greater than the uh, the actual outer measure of, of this set. So and we can do that for any epsilon, right? The fact that it's the outer measure is the infimum of these things means we can make them arbitrarily uh, small as long as they're bigger than uh, as long as they're bigger than the actual outer measure. Right? That's the definition of the infimum that we're using. But here's what we what we want to do. But let me let epsilon be greater than zero. Oops. Let epsilon be greater than zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the measure be greater than epsilon over two to the k. Okay, so each of these we can do this for any epsilon. So let's let's say for the k one, we're going to make it smaller than or equal to the measure of epsilon over two to the k. Yeah, and there's a reason we're going to do that. And I'll show you that in a minute. But just for now, let's do that. And then so we have a cover of of uh, of i uh, of e sub one. And we'll have a cover of e sub 2, and we'll have a cover of e sub 3, right? And we want to show that if we add these covers all up, we're going to get something um, smaller than than what we're, than the sum of all of these measures plus epsilon. Okay, so now let's take the sum of all of these covers. The sum, well, first of all, the, uh, the union over k. Of the union of of uh, I should probably call this i sub k j actually now that I think about this uh, the so let me let me let me go back and, and adjust that i sub k j okay so because we're we're talking about a specific epsilon sub k and, and j will be the thing that varies while k is all constant and then we'll let k vary as well of i sub k j covers the union across all k of e sub k. All right, because each e sub k is covered by a, a particular, um, this particular union, and so when we take the union of all of them, it will cover all of the e sub k. All right, the next thing we want to show is that the, what, what we need to show is that the sum of all of the i sub kj is uh, less than the outer measure, we need to show that the sum of all of the i sub k j, since, since they are in a form of cover of, uh, of this union that we're interested in. Right? 
right, um, is less than the, me the sum of the measures of the, the individual uh, e sub k's. So that's what we need to show. Sum of, uh, and we'll say the sum over k of the sum over j of i sub kj is less than or equal to the sum of the uh, overall k of the measures of e sub k plus epsilon. All right, so so there's a, a cup. So then we would have some kind of co some cover that uh, adds up to something less than the sum of these measures plus epsilon. And so we would know that the infimum over all of these such covers is less than or equal to the sum of all of these uh, outer measures. I'm using mu. What I, what I shouldn't really be using here is uh, is m star because that's how I defined the outer measure. So I'm going to replace that mu with m star. U would just be for a general measure, and this isn't even a measure, so plus epsilon. Okay, so we've got this this subadditivity that we're trying to show. <clears throat> and to show this, let's just show that the uh, sum of all k of the sum of all j of i sub k j is less than or equal to the sum of all k of well, uh, we we already specified that the sum of uh, from j is one to infinity of the volume of these individual things is less than or equal to m star of e to the k plus epsilon over two to the k. So we can go ahead and do that. M star of e to the k plus epsilon over two to the k. I guess what I should really be saying is the measure. Or actually, not the measure, but the volume of all of these these guys here. Okay, the volume. All right. Now, if we add all these things up, what we're going to get is the sum across all k of of m star e sub k plus we're going to get the sum across all k of epsilon over two to the k. So epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 4, blah, 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 um, which is just epsilon. Let me write that down here. Epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 4. We keep adding them up and we get epsilon. And then we've shown that it's sigma subadditive. So, so good for us. That's about all I have time for in this video. In the next video, I'll show some other properties of the Lebesgue outer measure.